All right, the next section of step six is to create a transaction ID in the transaction sheet by joining the following components. So you're gonna be grabbing information from the different columns to come up with a transaction ID that is unique to each one of those 999 transactions. So the abbreviation of the region is actually contained on the general information table right here. So what can I do? I can actually do a VLOOKUP and we've already used this plenty of times to become experts. What are we looking for? Is we're looking for the region. So that cont that's contained in my A2. So that's gonna be my search key. Where is my range that I'm gonna look for regions? That's gonna be contained in my general information table, regions to abbreviations. Um, and I'm gonna display the contents of column number two. And I know this is not sorted and voila. I have my first string and it happens to be uppercase. Woohoo. All right. So what is the next thing that I need to display? I need to display the left four characters of the industry for that transaction. For that case, then I can just concatenate. And the concatenate function will put together more than more than one string. So first I'm gonna concatenate this string plus another string. What is the other string is gonna be the left four characters of the industry, right? So the left function is going to return a substring from a string displaying only the number of characters from left to right that you specify it to do. So I want to display the industry, in this case contained in C2, right? And only the left four characters. So you see that I just provide the number of characters and that's it. Um, then this other function that says concatenate will put them together. And so in essence, I have C agri um, and so forth. Oh, there's a problem. What did I do? I did not anchor this as I should have. Now that it's anchored, I can copy paste and we're all set. Okay. So now that I have my first two requirements, I can move on to the third the second word from the customer column. Ooh, that is uh, quite complicated. So what I'm gonna do to tackle this is, is to work on this separately, mainly so that I can explain it. And the way I'm gonna extract the second word from my customer column is by playing with the text. Now, it is very difficult for me to know in which position cancer sticks um, or the second word uh, exists for each one of those customers. So cancer sticks has, might be the second word starts on third or fourth, on the seventh, seventh or eighth position, character position. Park starts on the second, third, fourth, five, six, seventh position, but that changes from word to word. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trick the system to add a bunch of spaces because spaces can be eliminated very easily with the trim function, no matter what, if you have additional spaces or double spaces, the trim function gets rid of that. So what I'm gonna do is put a bunch of spaces and then pick up a look, pick a location of a character to extract the mid word and then get rid of all the extra spaces. So let me let me work on that so you can see what I'm what I'm referring to. So first of all, I'm gonna use the word substitute. So I'm gonna substitute within the customer um, the customer column, I'm going to look for all of my spaces and I'm going to replace them with 99 spaces. I'm being arbitrary here and I could type in 99 spaces. So I'm going to use a little trick here. That's called, it's a function called repeat and the repeat function, uh, can repeat any string a number of times. So I'm going to say, give me 99 spaces, right? Uh, so here, what I'm doing is replacing every space with 99 spaces in column B, in column B or in, in the cell B2. And then as I copy it down, it's gonna change it. Um, and that's it. Let me close that and show you what we got. So now we have a huge, a huge field with, with names that can expand pretty, pretty, pretty broadly, right? So if I wanted to look at the middle space, I would be very safe to say I can choose uh, position number 100 at the very least, because I know I added 99 spaces. So if I choose position number 100, 
I know that that is um, the furthest, the closest, the furthest to the right, or you know, just an arbitrary position where I can start extracting text. So I can extract the middle of the text, and the mid function extracts a substring of text from a of another field, starting with position x. Uh, and then it counts the number of positions. So if I were to say extract from position number 80, it's very likely that I'm always going to find um, a space based on what I did right now. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and wrap this and say, let me use the mid function, which basically extracts a string of text starting with character number. And in this case, I'm going to say, let's start with character number 100, because sometimes I'll have, for example, for and, I'll have and plus 99 spaces before the next word comes in. So my word chill is really sitting at position number 102. So I'm always going to find uh, a space in position number 100 because there was not a word that is as big as 100 characters. All right. And so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to say, how long do you want to extract? How much do you want to extract? Well, I only want to extract 99 more characters after character number 100. So it's very likely, since I only added 99 spaces on the after, after the word, it's very likely it's impossible to, to get to the third word. All right. So in this sense, I now have a bunch of words padded with a bunch of space. Now, if I turn around and say, how do I get rid of all those spaces that are padding the word? I can just trim it. So I can use a function trim, which basically removes leading, trailing, and repeated spaces in any text string. Then that's going to give me the actual word on that space. Notice that in the case of empty, where you, empty, um, uh, Col uh, empty columns where, or you, where you had one word only, it's not going to give you a second word. And that's okay. That's what we want. All right. So having said that, I can then put it all together, right? I can grab the entire function that I, that I created here, and I can now put it on my concatenation. And notice that if I go to this, if I, every time I go to inside of parentheses, Google Sheets tells me which formula I'm inside of. So the, right here, I'm inside of the left column or the left um, function. Right here, I'm inside of the VLOOKUP look function. So if I wanted to continue concatenating strings, then I just need to find out where do I plug myself in. All right. So I'm just going to copy paste the text that I created. And sure enough, this is C Agri Sticks. This should be So Ho's Hospital Park. This should be MWNT chill, et cetera. All right. What else do I need to do? Well, I also need to make sure that I can concatenate the three right characters from the transaction type. Just like the left function, what this is going to do, I want to grab a substring of a string starting from right, right to left, only, only select three characters. So I'm going to use the transaction type and only get three characters from right to left of that particular field. Let me see what I'm doing. I think I have a, an error here. I fixed it. OK. All right. Sounds good. So now you see that I have H on after every single transaction, because all of them, the left, the, the three characters furthest to the right are always H no matter what the selection is. All right, so we have that. And then finally, we're going to use the text date to display the following format, YYYMMDDs. That means that I want a date to look like 2018, 11, 25, right? Something like that. So what I could have done is I could have said, well, let me, let me have the year, right? Uh, and then add it together with the month of the following date add it together with the day of E2. And that would have given me that text that I'm looking for. However, when you have a month that is not a uh, November, October, or December, it's only going to give me a single digit. See, 27, 5, 14. And that's going to create a problem for my requirement. My requirement is very specific. It says that I should have 
the YYYMMDD, meaning that I'm supposed to fill zeros where applicable for those states. Like in here, it should be 2017-0305. So I know a better function called text, and that text converts any number into a text field, including dates. And in this case, all I have to do is provide it the format that I want it to go in, all right? And it already gives me a sample. So if I do that, then it displays exactly the formatting that I want. So once again, I am going to grab that um, function and copy paste it into my concatenation formula, making sure that I'm always using this and then copy paste it and I can eliminate this. All right, so this is so far what I needed to do. An additional requirement is that all of these items be uh, selected in uppercase. So I can use the uppercase formula or upper formula, which can convert every single character in a string to an uppercase letter. See, now that's all converted to uppercase. Once again, by just wrapping all of the formulas in a bigger envelope called uh, within the function to, to apply the function upper. I'm going to copy paste everything. And now the next thing I need to do in lowercase is grab the transaction type. So I'm going to go inside the concatenate. Oh, I need to do something different. I need to do it separately. So let me and let me add this as an and only. I don't need to use a concatenate. So let me add F2, right? Because that's the code that I need to add. Um, and, ah, but it's asking me to do it in, in a lowercase. So let me start by using the function lowercase, which is lower. So that's going to convert all of the text. You see this A, this A letter is uh, uppercase. I need it to be lowercase. So I'm going to use lowercase F2. And I'm also going to put my initials here. In this case, this is the only thing you can hard code, your initials. My initials are FB, and that's it. Uh, so then that is adding, it's actually just concatenating F, the contents of F2 and FB, my initials. One last thing that it's asking me to do is to make sure that there are no spaces. So I am going to trim it to make sure that none of this gives me a space in between as that can trigger an error. And that's it. So I have, let me take you all the way to the back, to the top. So I have a, the trim of the entire string. And this string is the concatenation in upper case of the lookup value, the left industry, the second word of the company, the right uh, three characters of my transaction type, and the text format of my date, plus a code attached to my initials. And that should pretty much be a unique identifier. I'm not saying this is a, a guaranteed unique identifier for everything, but that's it. I hope this was helpful. Let me stop the video.